Hey, John here. Last time we talked about how to use symbols that have multi-units and some of the gotchas and pitfalls that you're going to run into when doing that, most of which, in my opinion, are focused around the annotation process. So let's look at how you create them and what shows up during that process. So I'm going to open up the symbol library editor. Let's just add one to my little test play library. Uh, come down here. Uh, new symbol. We've seen this before. Name it something. I'm going to just make a foo symbol. It's going to be a chip. So it's U. And I'm going to just simply say, hey, I want to create something with two units. Now I've got a two unit symbol. So then we have to focus on what the other options are that we want to deal with. This is not such a big deal anymore. I could talk about this in some other video someday. We're not creating a power symbol. And then you end up with this interchangeable unit stuff. Now, I didn't really beat this up too much in the video on using these things, believe it or not. Uh, this um, is probably a good idea to leave this box checked when you're getting used to this the first time. What this really means is, uh, you know, like the potentiometer example in my usage video, uh, multi-unit symbol usage video, the, the pots were interchangeable because they were all identical in every way. If they're not, like one of them is a power uh, unit or something like that, then you need to check this to say, look, they're not all exactly the same. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna do that for our first try here. I'm going to go ahead and get Control S to save it uh, for no useful reason. Get these dumb dumbs out of my way. Move. Okay. I guess put this up on top. Now, what do we know when we have a two unit symbol versus a regular one unit symbol? This box up here turned on. I can edit both unit A and B individually. Uh, this also comes into play here. Because I checked that box that says, uh, default, you know, multi-unit parts are interchangeable or not. I said they are not. So this thing gets turned off. I'll go back and make another one, and we'll come back and look at it again. So the thing for multi-units is this pull down and this guy here. All right, let's uh, make something. These are not interchangeable. Therefore, each one of them is unique and different. So let's go ahead and put some pins in here. Let's call this one A for pin one, and uh, we don't really care this also kind of comes into play this is the same um, sort of idea that you will see happens over here when I put this pin down do I want to put it on every one of the units like the digikey version of the op amp in the previous video on using these things so I'm going to say no let's just take the defaults here and we'll put a pin 2 on there it's going to be 2 Fine, keep it simple. It's a two pin part. Here, let's make a, uh, whatever, a package of some kind. Double click the border, fill the background. Okay, so there's unit A. I'm going to hit save. Let's go down and look at unit B. Now, when I move the legend around, it just still moved it on both of them. That's okay and probably what you want anyway. Now, when I put pins over here, I'm going to put a C for pin three. I'll put a D for pin 4, and I'll put an E for pin 5, because, you know, these are not all interchangeable parts in this example. Let's make that as obvious as we can. Double-click this. Come on. Fill the background. OK, and save. I just created a multi-unit symbol with non-interchangeable parts. So let's go out of here and throw it on a schematic and see how well, that manifests itself. Uh, JB or Foo or whatever. There's the little arrow we saw last time. So clearly it has two units. There's an A, there's the B, and everything that applies to using multi-unit symbols now applies to this. Let's go ahead and copy this A over here, copy the B over there. Or maybe move it up here. Remember the games, uh, which one's going to be 101 and which one's going to be 102 and so on. I'm going to go ahead and delete the op amps over here so that that doesn't confuse our example. This is somewhat of a repeat from the last time. Let's go ahead and keep because there's nothing annotated yet anyway. It's upset that I don't have any footprints. Uh, what did I do? I clicked the wrong... I clicked the wrong uh, button. <laughs> I wanted to use this. Darn it. <laughs> 
Annotate schematic. Okay, fine. Here we are. Um, what do we got? So remember the 101s come before the 102s and so on. So I got 101B and 101A, 102A and 102B. And because that checkbox was on, all right, the A's have to stay A's and the B's have to stay B's. I could use 101B versus 102B. Oops. It doesn't matter what chip it comes from if I allow myself to reset the annotations and so on. But the A's have to remain A's and the B's have to remain B's because of the checkbox that I turned on. And we'll look at that again in a second here. Let's go back and make another one and see what happens, right? I'm talking about, this is another way to edit those symbol preferences once you've gotten in here, right? The all units are not interchangeable. In this box in this context refers to the fact that an A has to stay an A. This cannot become a B, all right, during annotation and so on. It does not mean, by the way, you can change it manually at any time. Like I mentioned before, I can just go in there and I can make it into a B. But that not interchangeable stuff has to do with whether or not KeyCAD is allowed to change this around during the annotation process, okay? Uh, okay, this is probably more often than not what you want to do when you have a multi-unit symbol, by the way. The need for it to automatically swap these A's and B's around in the current state of KeyCAD is probably not truly significant. It would be more significant if the PC board editor had what's called a gate swap, uh, swap feature. Other editor, Altium and stuff like that, have the ability while you're actually laying out copper to say, look, I got a chip here and I know it has like say a four NAND gates in it and I don't care which gate is doing this job or like you know, two op amps in this single chip and I don't care which op amp I'm using, I just need to use one of them. And when you're running the copper on the board, you might not be able to get to one as easily as the other. And you say, boy, and when I drew the schematic, I should have used the op amp on the pins that are on the left or something like that. Okay. That's called gate swapping. And right now, KeyCAD doesn't automatically support that. Uh, I suspect that they may in the future, at which point in time this would become more useful. Uh, as drawn, since these two units are not physically identical it would be incredibly annoying to f make a b into an a after you've wired it into your schematic okay i can't beat that dead horse enough so let's go ahead and make a different symbol that works the other way just for fun let's call this one a bar make it a two unit symbol and this time i will not check the magic checkbox. say hey, look they're all the same like the potentiometer in the last video Okay, move one of these things out of the way, move this up here, whatever. Not that critical. Okay, let's put some pins down. Now, okay, uh, first thing we notice, we got our units A and B, just like before, because I said it's two units, but because I didn't turn on the checkbox that, that turns off the gate swapping, that somebody should have phrased that box differently, this thing is now on. And it is also enabled. I can shut it off now if I want to, but by default it's on. And what that does, if you read the little comments in there, it says synchronize the pins in edit mode. All right. This simply says, it does what it means. Synchronize bit edit mode propagates to all other units. Any pin changes except for the numbers. Okay. So what does that mean? That means I can put a pin here and call it A. Call it pin one, and even if I don't say common to all units, it is common to all units, all right? I come over here to B. Why? Because in order for these to be interchangeable, automatically interchangeable, they both have to have an A pin in the same physical place so that the wire is drawn in the schematic that hooked to that terminal right there, always hooked to an A of either unit A and unit B. And in this case, the pin number is a screwy name. If I double click it and edit it, I can call this one, let's say, call it pin five. So unit B function A or pin A is on pin five. And unit A, it's on pin one, 
All right. So this is kind of how that op amp, this is exactly how the op amp is kind of built. Uh, the op amps are not, um, if you look at the, uh, if you edit that, the, 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 uh, the library symbol for the op amps, this is set to not interchangeable though, by the way. All right. Because the 5532 in the KiCad library has three different units and they're not all the same. So that makes sense. It turns out the DigiKey one could have that checkbox off like it is in this one I'm creating right now. And they could be interchangeable, but for some reason, DigiKey decided that even though it could be, they disabled that function. All right. Why? I don't know. You'll have to add, ask them. So let's put a B on here on pin two. And we're still synchronized, right? So if you look over here, let's make that on pin six. All right. I mean, this makes sense, right? So let's go ahead and draw a box over here. Oh, there's a weird editing artifact there. Probably a bug in the program. Fill background. All right. Now, this probably didn't propagate to both. Oh, it did. By default, that was on as well. Uh, because, presumably, I'm in uh, the mode where all the, all the parts are interchangeable. Okay? Fine. Let's save this guy. Close this down. And throw one of those in the schematic. Mm, what do I call that? A bar? There's my two units. There's my B. Let's throw another one over here, and put a B up here. Now watch what happens. Over here, as I said before, an A must always be an A, and a B must always be a B for this kind of symbol. And if I reset like I showed you in the prior video, it might change 102A to 101A and so on, but an A is always an A, all right? Because these are swappable. Look what happens to this guy. If I, uh, well, these are not yet annotated. So let's go ahead and do this. And it will keep these the way they are. And it will annotate this. I suspect it'll make that an A, and a B, and an A, and a B in this annotation order. Yes, and it did. So this is what it means to say that the gates are all interchangeable to KiCad. Why? Because it's going to interchange them at will. I actually find this incredibly uh, um, disorienting. Uh, I tend to manually assign the gates when I write my draw my schematics. And then later on, uh, when I do my annotation, I pretty much say, keep uh, oops, keep the existing annotations all the time. I, I pretty much manually do my multi-unit parts. Sometimes you can do this. Uh, keeping the order uh, in the scenario where the gates are not interchangeable. We already know about that. In the scenario where they are interchangeable, uh, it means something even different still. I think it's still going to rename them because it said it could rename them. So let's go ahead and reset uh, and keep the order and show you what happens. It, no matter what it is, it, 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 it seems to want to mess with it. Hang on, let me delete this so that we can keep our eye on the game here. So let's go ahead and do a, a reset, but keep, right? No. In the other scenario, the Bs would have stayed Bs and so on. I think that's going to become an A is what's going to happen here. Uh, no, it did keep the B, A, A, B. Is that really what happened here? Uh, of course, it helps if I move it around a little bit. Um, let's move this B up to the top and see what happens here. I think that certainly that'll be a 101. Whether that becomes a 102 and these two stay together or not, I don't know. Uh, yeah, these, uh, what did it do? B, A, 101A. Yeah, these down here were together and those here were together. But in this particular ordering... That would have been true anyway in the other scenario. So let's put this way down here and see what happens. My point is, if you're going to do this, make sure what you know, run a bunch of experiments like I'm doing right now. Oh, did I reset them? Reset, but keep order. 
yeah, all right, this doesn't seem too bad. If you do a reset and keep order, it does appear that the A's stay A's and B stays B's. I don't know. I thought I saw a case when I was messing around with this once where the twos and the ones didn't uh, stay on the same part. Yeah, these stayed together and these stayed together. All right. So <laughs> moral of this story is if the gates are interchangeable or swappable, be very careful about this sort of thing, right? Because it could change the letters as well as the numbers. So I think this is going to be an A and a B on 101, and that'll be an A and a B on 102, which means everything will get re rearranged now in the full reset mode, as it just did. So keep your wits about you if you're playing with these things, all right? If you, this was useful to you, let me know in the comments. Uh, you got any ideas for other videos that you want to hear about or see about, uh, feel free to, uh, to send me a note or pop something in the comments. I, pre I read all of them. I don't get that much. So it's easy for me to keep up. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.